Welcome to the Bold Moves How Did You Know podcast, a podcast for the naturally curious who want to define their own path. I'm your host, Kristen Rocco, and here I'm sharing bold move stories that propelled my guests from curiosity to action. And in doing so, they've defined a path that is purposeful to them. Through these stories, I hope you'll be inspired to pursue your boldest dreams. Bold movers, here we are at the season two finale. I am so glad that you've been on this ride with me all year. This year, we shared 17 bold move stories together and a few more solo episodes in between. Probably my favorite solo episode as I'm reflecting was the Olympic episode called Crush Your Bold Goals Like an Olympian. I was so inspired by the amazing athletes and their stories from this year's Paris Olympics that I analyzed how they excel at their goals. We talked about the resiliency of Simone Biles, the mindfulness of Suni Lee and Steven Nedarajak, who is actually on Dancing with the Stars. So I wonder if anybody is watching that with me. The pure passion that these athletes devote to their sport, even when they have to have another job to support it. And we heard that from the water polo team this year, where Flavor Flav stepped in to help support the team so they could focus on their sport, as well as that dedication of practicing a full 40-hour week to make incremental 1% improvements and so many more different stories in that episode. So I hope you had a chance to check it out, but if you haven't listened to it yet, it is there for you. These episodes for the past two years since I started this podcast, and this year is no different, have kept me focused and dedicated on my personal bold move goals. I hope they have done the same for you. And one of my strengths, is seeing the patterns in these stories about how people approach their bold moves. That's how I came to distill the bold moves recipe, which I presented in the very last episode last year. And I've continued to talk about it and use it myself this year to help me focus and going on the bold moves that I had laid out for myself. So for this year's season finale, I wanted to show you rather than tell you how I distilled it. So I went back through the 17 interviews I conducted this year and pulled out my guests' experiences and insights that speak to each one of these three ingredients. You or your desire, who, and do or action, and put them in a compilation style three-part finale. Today, you're going to hear how my guests have first had a look-see inside to discover what their next bold move was from their authentic desire. When we get stuck, we often lose sight of our desires. Can you relate to being stuck for way longer than you would prefer to? I have felt that so many different times in my life. I believe that the pain and stress of the experience that leads you to that stuckness can overtake your ability to go inside and do an inventory on your life to find new answers. However, I always think back to what my podcast guest and career coach, Ange Barnard, said on this show. She said, contrast gives you clarity. I like thinking about that because... Then we can get curious about why we have contrast in our lives, and that can lead us to new answers about what we want, why we want it, and who we need to be to get it, instead of letting that pain and stress overwhelm us. So let's hear more about ingredient number one, identifying your desires today. In order, you're going to hear from... Mikkel Leslie, author of Soar by Living Your Life, Ditch Unhealthy Expectations and Get After What You Want. Julie Stoltman, who's the founder of Reframe Career and Leadership. Imran Syed, who's the founder and CEO of Hatchproof. Morley Desai, the CEO of Amira Natural Skincare. Allison Hare, the host of Late Learner Podcast and a Life Transition Coach. 
Nancy Davis, a certified coach and strategist for high achievers. Matt Cross, the co-chief chocolatier of Harvest Chocolate. Courtney Benjamin, realtor co-leading the King and Hamilton Group. Carly Sidoti, the founder of Buttoned Up Consulting. Me, yours truly. <laughs> Julie Randall, author of Patient 71. I hope this inspires you to keep asking yourself questions about who you are, who you want to become, what you want, and why you want it. You can get a companion guide to this episode and the others in this finale series on my website, kristenrocco.com slash bold-moves-podcast-club. I will link it in the show notes. And upon signing up for the podcast club, the Bold Moves Recipe email series will start to give you even more ways to think about applying the Bold Moves Recipe to your goals. If you felt complacent and that little whisper inside of you is nagging you, it's time to take action. This is the first step to making progress. Stop waiting. We are a whole community here to support you and your bold moves. Okay, let's get into part one of the season two Bold Moves How Did You Know finale discussing ingredient number one of the Bold Moves recipe, you. Take it away, Mikkel. What did you learn about yourself when you were going from your job to something completely different? What were some of the biggest lessons? Yes, there was so much. There was so much self-exploration because it was six months of me turning inwards and figuring out what it is that I wanted in my life and my mm -hmm. career and what I stood for and what my values were. All these things and ideas that I didn't have time or space to really dive into or energy really mm -hmm. dive into before with all my previous jobs. So it was understanding that like, oh yeah, I really do love the outdoors and want that to be part of my life more. I love helping people and that connection with others. Like how can I include that into my life more? There is so many things where society has put pressures on us, ourselves, social media, our friends, our family, unknowingly putting pressures on us that are unhealthy for us on one way or another. So this could be about how you look or the job that you have, the money that you make, your weights, um, your relationship there's so many different components of your life that can be expected of you and if you don't know for yourself right. of what those expectations that you have for yourself you can't really dive in and be like okay that's not me that's not what i want anymore that's not the life that i want to live and only by knowing what you're seeing what you're hearing from yourself can you rewrite that narrative for yourself and be able to say this is what i want to stand for this is who i am this is who i'm becoming mm -hmm. and this is the life that i'm going to live I want to dive deeper into some of the topics you talk about in the book. When I was reading the introduction, I was stopped when I read this line. You said, if nothing else, I want this book to show you that you have choices. That's a big message. And I was curious about why this was an important message for you. Why was the intentionality behind the book to show the readers they have choices. There's so much that tells us that we can't, that we're not good enough, that we should be thinner, we should be richer, we should be living the millionaire life, we should be mm -hmm. living something that isn't our own. And so mm -hmm. knowing and stepping back to be like, wait, I can choose how I live my life. I can choose when I wake up in the morning, I can choose what job I have. All these different things you're choosing. And so bringing it back to realizing that each day that you wake up, each day that you go to work, you're actually choosing that action to go to work because you could not go to work. Like that is an option for you. Like technically yeah. at the root of it, it is an option. Yes, there's consequences. Yes, you might have to pay bills. Yes, you might have to move. Like there's all the different things. But at the end of the day, everything you do is a choice. And the more that you mm. can be aware of that choice, the more that you can see, I can change this if it's not working for from learning about myself and what I, I liked, which was building these programs and coaching people. So that was my mm -hmm. first experience, really coaching people in a completely different capacity than what I do now. Mm -hmm. But it gave me that insight and I transitioned into the field of organizational development. So I was in the room with these CEOs and executive teams and boards, and they were getting so much investment 
right? They had executive coach and we were doing these big strategic planning efforts and people were talking about millennials. Oh, they're not invested. They're not, yeah. they're just, you know, how do we get in touch with them? And meanwhile, I, as a millennial was in the break room with these folks, having these conversations. And like you said, I saw the passion and the desire for people to be doing meaningful work, but there was that disconnect. And so that was the first spark where I thought, well, hey, why is there so much investment when people are at these senior levels of their career and have already gotten the titles? What about folks who are actually trying to figure it out and actively do want to be able to grow? Where is the investment there? So that is kind of the initial steps. And then the, the I guess the leap I took was I built a workshop and I still very clearly remember writing an email out to friends kind of saying, hey, I'm doing this thing. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a value, but like, I'd love you to join me. And that was kind of the launch of, of Reframe and it didn't form into a company for a few years, but I learned so much. And that leap was where it started. As folks and in, in your, your audience thinks about some of these bold moves, you might have somebody out there listening about starting something anew and uh, going out on their own. And Mm -hmm. uh, this was a very difficult thing for me to do, but um, I had been thinking about the problem for some time. And I said, hey, I'm going to go out and do it. A good friend of mine, who's also an early investor at Hatchproof, shared with me, if it's an itch, leave it alone. If it's a burning desire, take it to the end and figure it out. And, and this really became a burning desire for me. In that period, I just, looking back now, I just lost myself. I put everything else before me. So I put my career before me. I was working for uh, Medtronic, a big corporate medical device company. I was traveling every other week on the road. You know, I had put becoming a mom in front of it and just was so anxious and, and just like, the mental resource that went towards that, you know, put my husband, put my marriage and I just put myself last because that was just, again, what I thought what I needed to do. And coming out of that, it just, you know, it just didn't work at, at some point. And so in 2020, being a very influential point where, you know, my co-parent and I decided that we just weren't making each other happy. You know, I had, I had had the two babies at the time and the youngest one had finally turned one. And so I felt like I could get my body back at that point. Mm -hmm. I was about to turn 40, which I feel like is one of those pivotal moments where you just kind of like, okay, I'm half done. Like what, what do I want my life to be? And, oh, there was this little pandemic going on that caused all of us to like stop and take stock. And so I ended up exiting from my marriage. I ended up deciding that my corporate role was not giving me what I needed and walking away and deciding that entrepreneurship is what I truly wanted. And then I ended up embracing COVID and saying, you know what, I'm going to put myself first and I'm going to take care of myself and put that emergency mask on my face first so that I can take care of everyone else, including my two little boys. We have a lot of different identities. And I think when people put too much focus into career is a big one, right? They, they put too much focus into their career. You get to a place where you start looking around and thinking, wait a minute, this can't be what this life is all about. Is that kind of what happened for you, Marley? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It was like in my marriage, in my career, in life in general, I like, yeah, I picked my head up and I was like, okay, this isn't what's making me happy. I don't feel like I am living what my mission is. So what was the first step you took when you knew the reckoning happened and you knew something's got to change? What was the very first thing you did? It was committing to put myself first and investing in myself. And really that was about my wellness and saying, okay, again, I was one year postpartum after having like my two sons within 18 months of each other. And so I did not feel healthy in my body. I did not feel like I was just getting the hormones out. And I was like, I am just going to commit to feeling better. It started with movement and just saying, I am going to make sure that I move at least 20 minutes a day and really not making it anything that was too onerous and just starting there and then just building onto it. And I added meditation to that. I added my eating habits to that. 
I added making sure I got eight hours of sleep to that. And I just started building on Mm -hmm. and prioritizing that. And I felt like, okay, when I got to a point where I felt like as a human that I could do that, then I worked on the other stuff. And so, but the, really the first part was committing to myself first. And I, it just made me realize like there were only really three things that brought me joy and made me feel like a real person. And that was myself, my family, and my mission. And my mission is to empower women. And I really re-architected my whole life around those three priorities. I was just looking for any rocket ship to get out and have it feel better, right? Like, and so the little, the little breadcrumbs were the dance of like, saying yes more. And so I ended up becoming a dance fitness instructor. And I was like, I want to give this feeling to people, you know, like if, if it made me feel so good, I want to be able to give this to other people. I wanted to be able to spread it, you know, and the podcast, I wanted to make an impact and it felt right. It felt like I was in my element. So how do I say yes to that more, which is probably an important thing to remember for your listeners who are considering bold moves of how do you say yes more to what you want? How do you kind of take those dreams and take those values and things that you really, really care about and say yes to it more and look for opportunities, even in the micro choices of being able to to be expansive. And so I went to a tarot reading, of course, and she said, you know what, Allison, Uh, the card show, it's time to go. And I was like, that's it. That's it. It's in the cards. And, you know, through a lot of tears and a lot of, you know, really hard conversations with my husband where I was like, just give me six months to figure it out. But what I really needed in the boldest move was taking space. When I left my job, I made one decision and that was to make no decisions until I could hear my own voice again. And it took months and months and months and way longer than I had hoped. So that's my big, bold story in a nutshell. I just thought, huh, isn't it funny how many times people try to stick us in boxes? How do we not get caught into that trap of fitting in other people's boxes, Nancy. What do you think about that? If you want something, you have to ask for it. Because Mm -hmm. if you don't ask for it, it's not going to float down on a silver platter and land in your lap Mm -hmm. most of the time. So, for example, another bold move I made when I was in a corporate job was Mm -hmm. I, I was working for a large company like Fortune, whatever, 200, 100, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And it, it was life changing. I had my first baby mm-hmm. and I thought I don't want to drag to the office five days a week because I know that I am, I achieve twice the results of most people. Mm-hmm. So I thought a little bit, I wrote up a plan and this was before remote hybrid flexibility for women, women. I was a director, so no one was working from home. And I said, listen, I'm, here's what, what's going to happen, guys. And I wrote it. And I was nice. But I said, I want to reduce from five days to four days. And one of those days will be from home. No one worked mm. from home. Very few. But the, the wonderful thing about it, Kristen, was I also knew my value. Mm. And so you don't have to fit in anyone's box if you know your value. And I said, and I also had access to information. And I was in financial planning and analysis. So you can imagine the information that I had access to. And I said, I will deliver these same results as Mm. everybody else. And by the way, I'm going to do this new schedule. And P.S., I would like a raise. It was something, it was 35, 40%. I just said, this is what I want. This seems fair to me. And so the president at that time said, well, I got to run this up the ladder and then Within, I think it must have been 24 hours, I got the yes. Mm. And it was really wonderful and fantastic and enabled me to stay in that corporate job and actually in in that space and Mm. progress different roles. How are you writing your own story? I think it's more like what I need for my life. When I was younger, I moved around a lot, just kind of working in restaurants and, you know, I worked for somewhere for a short period of time and 
live in a city for a couple of years and go somewhere else. And I think it was more at that time I wanted more adventure and see the world more so until that got kind of old because the environment was toxic and the pay was terrible and the hours are long. And then it was like, I just want weekends off and paid time off sounds great. Health insurance sounds great. So then I took a jump into corporate life and my wife and I were building this business on the side. And I think it's more of like the things that you need in your life of like defining, I don't want to do this thing anymore, but I can go do this over here that doesn't have that problem that I don't like over here. Oh, I love that. Problem solving through your career to help you define what's next. What was it about real estate that was unlike these other things that you had tried that really made you feel like this could be the path for me? So every realtor is basically a business owner, which I hadn't realized before because you really do work for yourself and run your own business. And the idea of entrepreneurship, especially in our family, was always very encouraged. So I really liked that idea of it. And I saw how exciting the career could be. You're constantly doing something new, constantly problem solving. And it's a very rewarding career overall. And it really is one of the few, I would say, careers that the harder you work, the very direct results you're seeing from your hard work. So I really liked that I felt very inspired and in control of my business. I just found myself being more unfulfilled and thinking, uh, losing steam, kind of getting burnt out, thinking of different Mm -hmm. options. And a good thing happened at work, a few good things that happened. I won a new business, which was huge at an ad agency. And it was, I was on such a high. It was great. You bring in a big new client to the agency, things look good for you. So soon after that, I got promoted to VP and I'm just flying high. I'm like, things are great. I'm on the trajectory of being VP. And due to some organizational changes, I got removed from the account, unfortunately, and thought, oh my God, what the heck? You know, it was just a a, a gut punch and a blow to your ego because you think, okay, now what am I going to do? Is this path for me? You start second guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. So that had happened in my professional life. And soon after in my personal life, I have a cousin who's very close to me who got diagnosed with cancer. And those things all together, the highs and the lows that all happened in really like five months together, I I really had to do soul searching and think, this is my pivotal moment. What am I going to do? Life is too short. Let me make a decision of of what I want to do next. And you probably felt that way too. I mean, maybe you had some ups and downs and when you had that pivotal moment of like, what am I doing? Totally. Yeah. What's my story? I don't have a story. And that's, I kind of think what, where the soul searching started thinking, all right, what is my story going to be personally and professionally? I didn't know what that was yet. So it was listening to the podcast, listening to other people's stories mm-hmm. and getting that inspiration and hiring a career coach. So that was really a lot of the work that I felt like I needed to do on myself to clear my head and see a, a forward path. That's what I've learned about creativity, that when you're doing something because it's deep within you, it's that internal compass that guides you along to write your own story. If you feel stuck right now with where you are and you know you want to change, let your curiosity wander into discovering yourself a little bit more and find the creativity in you through that process and just open up your mind to whatever it is. Don't put any boundaries around it and see what comes up and then follow that for a little while and see how that feels. I know for me, being able to unlock the curiosity and then get into my creative bold moves has been really such a key to writing my own story. You will feel so much more fulfilled. And so I think that's part of the equation that people don't often, especially as we get into our middle life, get to express because we've got obligations, we've got patterns, we've got routines that take us away from being able to always be within ourselves. If you have a recurring desire about something that you want to do, you are capable of it. I don't believe you get the desire if you're not capable. Yes, you've got to go through the steps. Yes, it can be overwhelming, but 
you're capable of it. You know, I don't get a knock on the door to say, hey, Julie, I think you should be a rocket scientist because that's not for me. That's not my place in the world. But what I do get, and even before this happened to me, interestingly, I would get little nudges, hey, you should be out teaching, talking to people with, about, you know, your wisdom, whatever that may have been at the time. So that was always in the background even back then. But now I respond to the call. That's such a relief, yeah. actually, for people, isn't it? Yeah. it's re you, you don't get the recurring desires if you're not capable of doing it. It's your soul. It's yeah. your soul telling you what yeah. you, your place in the world, I believe. Your purpose, your gift. Hi again. I'm back after this amazing episode with all of these insights and stories that my guests shared around their true authentic desires and how those desires have sparked a new bold move within them. I took away so many amazing things just from hearing this compilation of my guess insights back to back that I want to share with you. The first is going deep within helps you hear your own voice again when sometimes you've lost it, in many cases when you've lost it. Say yes to what feels good in your body and say no to more of what doesn't. Only by knowing and hearing yourself can you rewrite your narrative and know what you stand for and who you are? Then there are some people who see a problem that surprises them about how passionate they are for this problem and that sparks a new bold move within them. If you know your value, acting on your desire is easier. Use problem solving on what you like and what you don't like to illuminate your desire for what's next. Life is too short not to do what you're meant to do. Let your creativity and curiosity lead you to find new answers about your desires. And you only get a recurring desire if it's meant for you. How powerful is that? I want to thank all of my guests for coming onto this show and sharing their experiences with me and with all of you. It truly is a gift and I really appreciate it. You might get more benefit out of this episode by listening to it a couple of times because I can promise you when you hear it for the second time and then the third time there's going to be another insight that you pull out that's going to help you on your bold moves journey. So we're stopping here for today. Next time, we'll be talking about the who part of the bold moves recipe. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks so much for tuning into the bold moves. How did you know podcast? No one said being bold is easy. So here we go at it together. If you love these episodes, you'll love the Bold Moves Podcast Club. We're a community of bold movers who are all working on our next bold move right alongside you. It's free and subscribers get exclusive stories and insights to encourage your bold moves journey, as well as invitations to the bold moves dinners, happy hours, and other community events. Hit the link in the show notes and subscribe to the Bold Moves Podcast Club right now. Here are some other ways that you can empower this show and help us build a thriving Bold Moves community. Take a minute to follow, rate, and review the show. Your support means a lot and helps reach more people who are ready to make bold moves. And to make the show even better, I'd love to hear from you. Complete our listener feedback survey. It's linked in the show notes and your responses will help me bring on guests and stories that align with your ambitions. And finally, let's keep the conversation going all week long. Connect with me on LinkedIn at Kristen Rocco or follow me on Instagram at Kristen Rocco. I can't wait to hear from you. 
Until next time, keep making your bold moves. One last thing before I leave you today. I'm your Bold Moves encouraging friend who wants to inspire and empower you to make bold moves to achieve your greatest dreams. I also need to remind you that this podcast is presented solely for educational and entertainment purposes. I'm not a licensed therapist, and this podcast is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, medical professional, accountant, lawyer, or other qualified professional. All right, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.